Georgia Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for healthcare in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank. Everybody, welcome to Georgia Southern Football 98, the Paul Johnson Show. I'm Scott Pierce, along with Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. The Eagles are on the road. Big Southern Conference game up in Cullowee, North Carolina, to play Western Carolina. Coach, we come into this game after a huge victory over VMI at home, but now we are moving into the upper echelon of teams. Right, and uh, Western has one loss in the conference already. They're setting two and one, so uh, this is a, a make-or-break game for them. It's uh, they're in a must-win situation and. And I feel like that we're in a must-win situation, too, so it ought to be a heck of a game. From a coaching standpoint, when you come off of a huge victory where you score 63 points, what job do you have during the week to sort of let the team know that, hey, things are going to be different this weekend? Well, we don't ever try to worry about who we play or what we did. We try to worry about ourselves, and uh, we just went back and, and worked on our package this week, both offensively and defensively, and corrected the errors. And, uh, you know, just worked on trying to get better. Being undefeated up to this point, you really hold your future in your hands, and it, we are entering the tougher stretch of games. We've got Western Carolina today, the most important, and then you sort of have to keep getting ready. What does Western Carolina bring to this ball game that we might see differently? Well, I think Western has a very good defense. Uh, they've played really good on defense and special teams all year, and offensively they want to run the football, and, uh, you know, that's a concern. We can't let them uh, control the ball and keep our offense off the field, and the other way, our offense has to go out and execute and uh, see if we can get some points on the board early. Should be a great game up in the mountains of Cullowee, North Carolina, to play the Catamounts. Don't go away. We'll have a look at the first half highlights. But first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football. The Eagles up in Cullowee, North Carolina to take on the Western Carolina Catamounts. Big game here in the Southern Conference. And coach, we open up and we're able to get the ball first and it, it looked like it was gonna be another nice day. We move right down the field and get a quick touchdown. Right, we were able to put together a nice drive and uh, they lined up in a little bit of different defense than, than uh, they did last year. They had widened their down tackles and uh, kind of similar to what Chattanooga had lined up in. and. Uh, we were able to go back to some of the stuff we ran against them and execute it fairly successfully. A nice 52-yard keeper by Greg Hill for the touchdown, and he ran the ball well today. Greg really ran his tail off today. I tell you, he showed a lot of character and a lot of courage out there. With the extra point, Georgia Southern leads at that point 7 to nothing. Western Carolina comes out for their initial possession, and our defense makes a statement and shuts them down quickly. Right. Uh, really uh, did a nice job early in the game. Uh, to, to come out and then get into the flow of the game and, and shut them down. We have to receive the punt, fortunately, from Western Carolina. We get the ball back and we're able to move down the field again, this time mixing it up with running by Greg and Adrian Peterson, another nice night. Once again, uh, we're able to run the option and, uh, and had a nice drive and uh, put it in the end zone. Greg Hill was able to really direct the offense against uh, a lot of pressure tonight. Uh, they at times were able to slip some people back in the backfield. Well, they, they play that kind of defense. They uh, blitz and stun a lot, and, and that's really their base defense. And, you know, we didn't hit them for as many big plays as I think we, we probably should have. But, uh, you know, when you live by that stuff, uh, you usually die by it, too. Georgia Southern leading at this point, 14 to nothing. Western Carolina gets the ball back. They're unable to move, so they're forced to punt to us again. And this time, they come up with some big stops, and we have to punt it back. Right. Uh, you know, we tried to throw it on first down and uh, probably made a poor read and, and got an incompletion and missed a read on the option on second down. And then uh, they sacked us on third down. We had a quarterback draw call. It really took some momentum. And then when we punted to them, we don't get a very good kick. 
and uh, they hit a big play and they're already down there. That's right. And that's how the first quarter is going to end to start the second quarter. Western Carolina is on our nine. They're going to throw that little inside screen and get in for the touchdown. Right. It was disappointing. We're in a zone coverage and, uh, you know, we should be in about as good a coverage as you could be in against that. And we just didn't play it very well. Western Carolina with the score now trails Georgia Southern 14 to 7. Georgia Southern gets the ball back a couple of big runs, but then we see that Western Carolina defense get Hill a couple times in the backfield and we have to punt. Right, we again, we weren't as sharp uh, reading the option tonight as we would like to be, but uh, you know, they were running some tough angle stunts on him and a lot of times uh, he was getting them right and we weren't getting uh, people blocked and uh, you know, I, I think that certainly while I hope I, th I think and hope that we didn't play as well as we can. I think you have to give Western Carolina credit for some of that. With a stop there, Western Carolina is going to get the ball back coaching. They're going to drive the ball down successfully on some big runs. They've got some big running backs. They're fullback and their full, uh, tailback over 220 each in weight, and they're able to move through our linebackers to, to get some big yardage. Right, they really hit some big running plays. We missed a lot of tackles, and uh, they hit one really big trap play on us. Uh, and, uh, you know, he'd make the safety miss a couple times, and when he did, he's, he's making 25, 30 yards at the end of the run. Western Carolina is able to get in the end zone to make it 14 to 14 at this point. And, Coach, you're in a ball game now. Well, we sure are. The momentum's changed, and, uh, and everything's changed, and they kick back to us. We're able to put together a couple of first downs, and then we turn the ball over. That's a big fumble because Georgia Southern was able to start moving the ball after we've been stymied our previous two possessions, and that sort of keeps that momentum swing going. Well, it, it, uh, it, it plays right into their hands. For them to stay in the ball game tonight, they needed to, to soundly beat us in the kicking game and, and for us to help them by turning the ball over, and we played into it. We did both. The game is still in doubt at halftime, 14 to 14. As we go into the locker room, don't go away. We'll be back with a look at the second half highlights. But first, we get up close and personal with the Eagles' big fullback, Adrian Peterson. When Georgia Southern signed Adrian Peterson, head coach Paul Johnson knew right away he was getting a special player. Really, when we first started recruiting him, we didn't feel like we had a, a, a real good shot. I thought he was going to go to a SEC school or somewhere. No wonder SEC schools were after Adrian. His brother Mike is a linebacker at Florida. Eagles offensive coordinator Mike Seawalk believes Adrian's brother has been a blessing. I'm sure that they worked out together and was lifted together, and they've pushed one another, and it's, I'm sure he's trying to play basketball and football and go one-on-one on, one on them. Meanwhile, it didn't take Adrian long to turn heads when he arrived in Statesboro. Well, last year, uh, he and J.R. Rivera played uh, quarterback and fullback or running back down on the scout team, and uh, they gave our defense all they wanted. Despite his success in practice, was Adrian surprised to be a starter this year? I mean, uh, somewhat. Besides battling defenders, Peterson is also working hard to overcome a speech impediment. And when he gets comfortable around you and, uh, and, and gets to know you better, he, he's not, he, he does a good job with it. And one thing that has made Peterson comfortable is Georgia Southern's offensive line. He got a great line. I mean, it's, it's an honorable way for all his fun. When I first started blocking for him, I knew there was something special. Uh, first couple runs, they were just, he'd break it in the defensive backfield, and he'd be running over folks, and it was just a pleasure to watch him run. Much made a lot of yardage on his own. He was he was hard to bring down, and he just ran hard. And we made a slight adjustment, like I said, in, um, at halftime, and we put us in better situations to stop him. No, it wasn't. These guys came out and they fought real hard, and they're a good team. They're a good ball team, and and I don't think we really played as well as we could, you know. But we had to suck it up in in the fourth quarter, and we finally, you know, we pushed through with the victory. Western Carolina really got up for us today. Uh, they gave us uh, their best shot, and we was able to escape escape.
escape this bullet here. We feel maybe we should, it shouldn't have been that tight, but I think it's a good experience for us to be in a tight game like that, um, especially coming up with this, this uh, weekend's game. I'm sure it's not going to be a blowout. Welcome back to Georgia Southern football. When the Eagles come out of the locker room tied with Western Carolina, 14 to 14, we have to give them the ball on the kickoff. Coach Western Carolina is going to take their initial possession of the second half. And our defense, I guess after the locker room, makes a stand. What would you tell them? Right. Uh, we made very few adjustments, really. Uh, you know, our defensive staff talked to them and, uh, and kind of settled them down. And uh, you know, they came out, and I think after one first down, uh, we stopped them and uh, were able to get the ball back for our offense. I was watching down here when the Eagles came out of the locker room in the second half, and you were sort of like in the middle of the guy, trying to get them pumped up as we went back into the game. Well, we talked about at halftime, uh, you know, if this team truly wants to be special, we had 30 minutes, and I told them, I said, hey, you're not going to get another shot at these guys. Give it all we've got for 30 minutes, and let's turn it up and see if we can't play with a little more intensity. Georgia Southern is going to receive the punt, and we're going to see a big drive here. And there was a big pass interference call on the drive to, to help it keep going. And thanks to the big running of Greg Hill and Adrian Peterson, Adrian's able to take it in from the one-yard line. Well, it was huge. I tell you, a big play in the game is when they punted the ball and had us pinned down on the six, and one of their guys got an unsportsmanlike penalty, grabbed a face mask on our sideline. and. Uh, we gained about uh, 25 or 30 yards in field position on that penalty and uh, you know we were able to take it and and grind it out really eat up the clock and uh, and get it in uh, third down big play on pass interference when uh, thought it was clearly interference the guy came into all drill way before the ball was there after adrian scores a touchdown at 5 third 5 59 in the third quarter the eagles kick off to western carolina they can't move much they're forced to punt we get the ball back and this time we're going to sort of run out the quarter and lead 21 to 14 at this point western carolina can't move again. We're seeing a lot of it at this point trading back and forth. Right. It was kind of a, a, a game where the, the clock was really running. Both teams were able to run some time off the clock really without, you know, we'd make a first down or two first downs and then we'd bog down. And uh, we couldn't really gain anything in field position because they were, they were killing us so bad in the kicking game. And we are going to see one of those big errors in the kicking game. On Georgia Southern's next possession, we're able to move the ball a little bit, but then we're forced to punt. And on fourth down, they're able to get a block on our punt deep in our territory. Right, very disappointing. We, we had driven the ball all the way down into their territory to about the 40-yard line. We were in a sky punt situation, took a delay penalty so we could back it up and have plenty of room to kick and let them come through and block the kick. And, uh, you know, it's been my experience in most games, you give up a block to punt, you usually don't win. A couple weeks ago, we talked about frustrations in the, uh, the kicking game and special teams, and I, I still hear it in your voice. Well, I thought we'd turned a corner the last couple of games, and then the night it reared its head again, and for whatever reason, we've just got to protect the kickers better, we got to cover kicks, and we got to kick the ball better. Georgia Southern, after that, giving up, giving up a touchdown. Western Carolina was able to take it in, and they've tied the ball game late in the game. It's 21-21. Right, and, and had all the momentum. Uh, you know, the crowd was excited, and uh, I think with about eight minutes to go in the game, it was a brand-new game. Georgia Southern answers the call, though, at 21-21. With about eight minutes left to go in the game, you're able to put together a huge drive. And thanks to Adrian and Javon Sullivan as well, and also Greg Hill, you're able to get it in the end zone and take some time off the clock. Well, our offense really did make some plays. We converted some third downs and uh, fourth down play from our own 41. And, you know, I probably wasn't very smart to go for it. I just Sometimes you have to go on your gut instinct. and. My gut instinct told me the way that game was going, I didn't want to give them the ball back with the momentum. And I really felt like that, that we had a chance to make it. And uh, credit to Adrian Peterson behind Mark Williams and Grant Chestnut over there, he got the first down. Also a lot in the uh, in that drive, we're able to see where you just basically told Greg to, to take it a big swing in the backfield and just head upfield, and he was able to get some good yardage. Right, they were, they were crashing everybody down so hard on the option, we were trying to just called some sprint outs and told them to run the ball and uh, you know we were able to get get outside them because they were crashing down on the off. Big touchdown for the Eagles is going to make it 28 to 21 but there's still time left. We have to kick off to Western Carolina with about a minute and a half left. They get the ball back and you think that they might have a chance to mount a drive and we get a big turnover. All right we do once again very poor kick and, and coverage and they get the ball out uh, to, to a good start and our defense came up big. They ran a little rocket screen that they'd heard us on earlier 
here, and our defense made a great play, knocked the ball loose, and we were able to cover. Georgia Southern gets the ball with about a minute 10 left in the game, and you decided to sit on it early, but then things didn't quite work out, and you had to make some adjustments. Well, no, we were going to sit on it the whole time. We were just trying to run the clock down. I, I knew they were going to take a timeout, so mm -hmm. we wanted to be safe with it to start with until they ran out of timeouts. And uh, we weren't going to take it out of Greg's hands. I mean, there was no reads, no anything. He was holding on. We were just trying to run wide so we could run a little more time off the clock. And that is how the game is going to end. Georgia Southern, big winners on the road against Western Carolina. A great game. And, Coach, this is one that you're able to take back and say, hey, 28 is more than 21, and we're happy to go home. That's exactly right. I tell you, anytime you get a conference win on the road, uh, you know, it's, it's great to come in here and, and win, and we're, we're, we're glad to get out of here, whatever the score was. We'll be back after this big win. We'll come back after this break, and we're going to take a look at a big game next week. Appalachia State at home in Statesboro. We'll have a look at that game after this. Hey, Coach. You know, during football season, there's nothing better than tailgating with some bubble burgers. You're right, Coach. But I like to grill them in the backyard, too. They're made from 100% USDA fresh ground chuck. You buy them frozen, you cook them frozen, and they taste great. And you know what Bubba says? You'll, you'll never, never bite a better, better burger, burger than, than a bubble, bubble burger. burger. Available at participating Kroger, Piggly Wiggly, Publix, Walmart, Winn-Dixie, and several independent groceries. Welcome back to Western Carolina. Georgia Southern, big winners on the road, 28 to 21. Coach, this is one where you really saw that Western Carolina was up for this game, and they gave you all you wanted. They surely did. I tell you, it started out, looked like it was going to be easy early, and it was a game of momentum shifts, and, uh, you know, they got it. And to our guys' credit, I think we found a way to win without maybe playing as, as good as we can play. And once again, I give Western credit for that. You know, Georgia Southern was able to move the ball uh, like they have been moving at times. The defense struggled early on, but they really stiffened up in the second half. Really did, did a nice job in the second half. And we played a lot more like Georgia Southern teams from last year in the second half, where the offense had some time-consuming drives, really ran a lot of time off the clock, and the defense would go out and get their offense off the field and give it back to the offense and, and give us a chance to wear them down. And it was a big win here in Cullowee, but things definitely don't get any easier. Coach, you're headed home to the friendly confines, but you've got an unwelcome visitor coming in App State, and they are really getting, you know, they're ranked three. We're two if everything works out. This is could be the game of the decade in Statesboro. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we're 6-0, and and they may be 6-0 and or 5-0, and and uh, I just hope that our crowd will come out next week. I mean, if we can't sell this game out, uh, you know, you got number two playing number three, and the, the winner's going to have a real leg up in the conference race. And, uh, you know, it's for a lot, and we need our fans to be there loud and the end of the game. And uh, it's a game I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, I don't usually say that, but I've been looking forward to it since last uh, year up there in Boone. Now, what does that bring in uh, that we're going to see next week? Uh, balanced offense, uh, very good defense. Uh, yeah, they're just a good football team. They're, they're good in every facet. They don't have a weakness. And for us to beat them, we're going to have to get contributions out of all three phases of our team. And also, especially some of the people they've beaten. You know, they've beaten a 1A team this year in Wake Forest. That's got to give your guys a little added momentum. Hey, if we beat them, we can say, you know, we got a pretty strong team. Right. Well, hopefully we don't need any added momentum. They beat us last year. And, you know, Georgia Southern struggled with Appalachian, I think, since they came into mm -hmm. the league. And, uh, you know, it's a chance to play for the conference lead. And, uh, you know, what else? It's like I told our guys after the game. That ought to be the reason you're playing. You know, it was Furman in the 80s. If there has been one nemesis for the Eagles in the 90s, it is App State. We will see them at home in Statesboro next week. It will be a huge game. We encourage all the fans to come out and see a good one in Paulson Stadium. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Scott Pierce. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week after the App State game. Georgia Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for health care in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba Burger. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank.